Hello, Augmenters. Today is episode 100, and I am thrilled to introduce back on the pod for a second time our first double guest, Kari Brown, CEO and president of Spark the Journey, also the only other basketball player from my high school and college. I followed in his footsteps. He's big bro. And we have a wonderful episode and discussion with Kari as he reflects on his more than two decades career at Spark the Journey, where they provide mentorship and community of support to young adults from Washington, D.C.'s low-income communities. Before we get to Kari, Julie and I are going to discuss a little bit about what we've learned over a hundred episodes and how lucky we are to be able to have conversations like we do with Kari Brown. Julie, we're at episode a hundred. I cannot believe it. This was our goal. We Eagle. read an article. This was Eagle. I think we read an article somewhere that somebody said a very small percentage of podcasters make it to a hundred episodes. And I think your text back to me was F you bring it on. And I don't here know we it- are. A hundred episodes later, we did it. High five. Oh, bad radio. High five through the Zoom. It's amazing uh, when you set your mind to accomplish a goal, especially when you are motivated by others outside of your little party and you think about the larger community that you can create. I want to come back to an earlier quote that we were given by another guest, Ron Johnson, shout out Ron, who told us that people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in five years. And it didn't quite take us five years, but it took us more than a year to get to a hundred. And I'm very happy we're here. I am too. And I was actually thinking about all the amazing advice we've heard from so many guests and the quotes. And the other one I was thinking about was Jacqueline Baker, Mm. one of our favorites and just start. And our whole platform, when we were trying to figure out how to do it, we're like, just start. We are not professional podcasters. We haven't learned, we haven't gone to podcast university, but I think (laughs) we've had just the chance to, yeah, jump into it and really have authentic conversations, which has been the best part. And Jimmy, I feel like a hundred episodes later, I have so much more clarity around mentoring, but -hmm. more than anything, I have so much conviction that this is mission critical for like our society, just to feel that sense of connection with others, to feel community, to feel like you belong somewhere. At first, it just kind of seemed like an interesting concept and worth just like having some chats about. And now I feel like, oh my gosh, this is this is vital for humans to be really focused on this. And I feel grateful that we have a chance to really talk about it. And if it's vital for humans, it's vital for our planet. I like big picture Julie. I like when you bring the big goals and you get that chip on your shoulder, I know we're going places and we're going to help others along the way. It's also been amazing what we've heard from folks in the audience and from people who have reached out to us just to have more conversations around mentoring and how important it is not just to continue to keep mentoring and one-on-one relationships front and center as part of our communities, but also that more and more people need to recognize themselves and begin to identify as mentors. We need more people to see themselves as mentors. When they look in the mirror in the morning, they need to see, I am a mentor for others, both now and in the future. And how important that that title, that role is within communities. And I think it goes back to that exactly like you said, Jimmy, like it's kind of that definition or just seeing yourself that way, knowing it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to have Mm -hmm. all the answers. You just have to be willing to listen, be willing to care, um, be willing to show up, be willing to ask questions, be willing to be vulnerable, share your own experience and share when you don't have experience. And really that's all there is to it. Like at the end of the day, it's just the action that feels hard. It's not the concept that's difficult. It's Mm -hmm. just the action. So going back to Jacqueline, just start, just start having that conversation with people and then being, you know, being vulnerable yourself. Do you have like one or two guest quotes that just stick in your head? Yeah. I still have uh, the quote in my head of you don't get what you don't ask. You don't get what you don't ask. Yeah. You don't, you you don't get something. If if you you don't don't ask, you don't get. No. uh, Yeah. (laughs) I might not be saying it perfectly, but uh, (laughs) you don't get what you don't ask for. Don't wait for others to come up and say, oh yeah, I'm sure you want this. You need to be clear about what you want. And if you, 
And if you provide that clarity, you have a chance of getting it. But if you don't, you have no chance of getting it. I love that. I love that because that actually connects to some of the things I feel like I really heard like from everybody from Mike Fata to Lisa Gable, these really powerful, influential people is like, just approach us the right way and we will make time for you. And like that idea of, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get, you just have to reach out and have conversations with people. If you do it in the right way, we always go back to it. Make sure you, you know, are humble in your ask. Make sure you are personal in your ask. Make sure you're clear in your ask. And you can have an opportunity to have some of these amazing people be your mentors. So I feel like we got a lot of good advice along the way. Do you remember who said that? Oh, no. shout, shout out episode 29, Linda Lee. Yes. Ooh, Linda Lee. Flex also threw her style. hands down on the table. Yes. And she was mad. I love that one. That was a great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah be able to really uh, get attention and, and speak your mind. But I feel like the big picture, we could obviously go through all our guests and so many different things we've learned, but I feel like what I have really learned is that when I think of all the organizations that need support, the idea of creating community and belonging through mentoring feels like the way to make a small difference in the world right now. And I know we talked a lot about, I think you and I sometimes get really lost in these really big challenges, everything from huge systems and, you know, the financial uh, hierarchies and, you know, higher education, like so many things that can feel really insurmountable. But I think just by trying to create more community and more belonging within all kinds of organizations, whether that is in a university or in a trade association or in an association or in a small company or in a big company, creating that community belonging is what helped through mentoring through these one-on-one deep relationships is a really important way to move our society forward. And it's achievable. It's possible. It's actually not that hard. It's just dedicating resources and time to it. You need to start somewhere, just like Jacqueline Baker said, just start. And though this is not eating the whole elephant at once, as they say, this is a bite of the elephant is beginning to have these one-on-one relationships. This is really the fabric of community or is one person caring about another and showing up for somebody else. And again, remember for all our listeners out there, the mentees are ready. People see themselves as mentees right now, but not enough people see themselves as mentors. And we miss, so often we miss the transformation that occurs for a mentor from the beginning of that mentoring relationship to a month, to a year, to 10 years into a mentoring relationship. People forget that the mentors gain perspective. They feel valued. They want new knowledge and they get new knowledge from their mentees. The mentors usually learn more than the mentees. The mentees get somewhere. The mentors get something. The mentors are going to build skills about how to connect with others. The mentors feel a significantly increased sense of purpose while they're in these relationships. The mentees show up with the purpose. The mentors leave with the purpose. And best of all, you're going to be able to tell all your friends at the coffee table. You're going to be able to tell your family at dinner that you are happy because you are investing in the future, that you saw a little bit of yourself in somebody else and you showed up with no agenda other than to show that you care, provide a little context, a little perspective and say, you can do this. And I'm someone that will show up and be your cheerleader in the background. Go get a mentee. Jimmy, I feel like we're going back to our roots of our pitch episode with QVC. This is like a, this is like a QVC sales for mentoring. And I think you and I would probably be the best co-host for that. I think that's our role. Yeah. (laughs) Whenever they're ready to move the prices right to mentoring is ready, the game show, you know, the the hosts are here. I'll spin the wheel. Julie, you grab the mic. (laughs) I love it. I love it. But honestly, this has been so much fun. It has totally enriched my life. It has changed my relationships. It has changed my perspective on how I approach interactions with other people, both being comfortable asking for help, which isn't really my strong suit, and also showing up for others. So I have feel I feel I have been transformed um, by this experience and working on this really fun uh, engagement and working with you. So we've had I've had a great time. And I love Kari. I'm so happy he is your mentor because he is the best in the business. And I'm glad we had a chance to have a follow-up conversation with him for our 100th episode. And how lucky are we that we've learned that we can ask for help about becoming better mentors and 
a better megaphone for mentoring by asking people such as Kari for help who have been so generous. I mean, now Kari is guest 99, I guess, because out of 100 episodes, these are the only repeat guest. But you know, we are so lucky to have all these people who give back to us. I think it just shows that people are ready to help you. Mentees go out and ask for help. And mentors, you look in the mirror and say, I'm ready to help others. Here we go. Kari Brown. Do you still feel that after the pandemic and after doing this for a long time that mentoring is a way to connect people who otherwise might not be connected? Well, I think mentoring is more important now than it was before the pandemic. Mm. I think we've seen I mean, one of the things that happened in the look, look, look what was happening with young people. Like I get people asking me all the time, like, what do we do about this sort of youth violence problem? And, yeah. and you know, we have so many young people who were disconnected from adults and adults who care and, and communities and, and, you know, structure and support. There was a mentoring deficit, right? There was already a mentoring deficit in a lot of those communities. And now, and then it was exacerbated by the impacts of the pandemic. So coming out of that everywhere, I think we are seeing that particularly with young people, they missed some crucial development. They And they missed some of the, whether it's knowledge of how to show up, right? Whether it's some smaller tactical things about, you know, how you do this, how you do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, all the etiquette. Etiquette, is, you know, I think some of that was lost. And, you know, mentoring is not a cure-all for mental health, but I think there's a, you know, we were talking about human connection, and, you know, that's a big part of, of our health and our mental health, right? And I think mentoring can, can impact all of those things. So uh, I'm going to ask you this big question, Kari, uh, because, you know, we've known each other a long time, much longer than I've known Julie. And you've been doing mentoring and helping people connect, uh, especially in, in those underrepresented groups and, and helping those under-resourced populations. If you had advice to give Kari after year one, what would Kari now, not doing like a future LeBron, historic LeBron, but just like Kari right now, what, what, what would you tell yourself after year one about how to think about people and how to think about these relationships that mentoring can create? I wouldn't go back really and change much. I think I, think I had it right, <laughs> largely. I think- Great answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I gained valuable experience of- from the mistakes that I made along the way um, that helped to bring me to where I am today. Um, I might have looked to, you know, knowing what I know now, I might have tried to tell younger me, chill out. It's going to be good. <laughs> Don't worry so much. <laughs> Don't totally stress right. so much. Probably wouldn't have helped younger me <laughs> because you know, there's some things about, you know, you can tell people all they want, but they sometimes they have to see it. So I wouldn't do too much different, honestly. And, you know, part of the reason I say that is that I was really privileged to have great mentors along the way who helped me. And I think I was, one thing I would credit myself with is I, I, I think I had a, enough of an understanding about what I didn't know and what I needed to know that I was mindful about, you know, where can I get this knowledge that I seem to be lacking? Yes. Retrospectively, I think, you know, not too much that I would do that I would do differently. I'm curious what Julie's going to say, but in a way, Kari, I think you just showed up as the best mentor to your historical self as you could, you know, like for how Augmenters thinks about, you know, our professional mentoring relationships, different than youth. But we say that the, the mentors are not supposed to come in and tell people what to do. They're supposed to listen. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you can tell the, the people need to see it themselves. Mm -hmm. And you just try to help them figure out what they need to know and how to do it. But it's the mentee, younger Kari, yeah. you know, yeah. with a whole lot of horsepower, right. <laughs> you know, right. needs to bounce around, figure it out. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that's right. And when you do start to prescribe too much people, you lose people, particularly younger people, particularly. Younger. You say, just really keep it simple. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, Jimmy, I, I love the way you said, you know, ask the questions, don't give the answers, right? I I wish I could say that we scripted this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't gotten that good after 100 episodes. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, you know, honored to be on the 100th episode, man, that's uh, uh, how lucky am I? <laughs> I mean, you tell us, Gary. I was gonna say, you're the one who <laughs> should answer that. No, <laughs> no, this is great. I mean, when you look back at a thousand episodes, you know, I feel like I was there for a big milestone. We'll see, right? Oh, yeah. A hundred at a time. Okay. Yeah. But Kari, like, we're laughing and, you know, because this, this is really fun, but it, what you inadvertently showed me in, you know, all of our right, earlier meetings before Augmenters jumped and just like staying in touch was the power of those relationships, like through mentoring. So, uh, you know, you never told me to do anything, but just by being you, we, we now refer to it as uh, sometimes as the shadow mentor where you're not, you're not actually showing up or necessarily doing anything, but these shadow mentors kind of create like mentor trees, almost right. like a coaching tree right. in sports. And that, you know, people kind of come up out of that and still look back to this person or, or think or have that person's voice in their ear right. as they continue forward. And uh, you've continued to be that way for me, even between, what was it, episode 15 and episode 100 on, right. on the podcast. All right. uh, by the way, this you would be our first uh, repeat guest. So, wow. Okay. You know, I, 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 another first here. But yeah, I mean, I think j just showing the power of that people can really grow to their potential better when they're with others and not necessarily alone. And you know, we were talking before the, the show here about, especially out of the pandemic, how important it is to be with people. Yeah. And one of the things I tell all my mentees, you know, my informal mentees is, you know, try to build a team around you, right? Of people who have bits of things that you want to pick up, right? That you, people who can make you better in some way. And, you know, always sort of surrounding yourself with people who compliment you, who challenge you, who be there to support you, who have bits of knowledge, experience, you know, something that can make you better. And that's, you know, essentially what we try to do with young people and forming community, right, around them is sort of creating, you know, with our young people, we're trying to create a hub where mm -hmm. you have these resources that can all connect, you know, can be interconnected through, in our case, you know, a case manager who works to communicate with the family and with the guidance counselor and, you know, with the mentee and, and so forth, right? And sort of pull the parties together. Older people need to create their own sort of networks, yeah. right? And I think that's what you were talking about. Well, for sure. So then what's, what's your challenge to older people? How do they create their networks? If, if you, you know, if you had something you wanted to say to our, our audience, is that go out and find a mentee and just keep showing up? You know, is that go somewhere new? Don't just go to the gym every morning, go somewhere <laughs> else later on in the day. <laughs> well, I think with older, I, for one, I'm a big believer in being a lifelong learner, right? So we're always looking for ways in which we can improve ourselves. So our sort of network of mentors, you know, that I still have groups of people who I you know, advisors and mentors, and I will continue to surround myself with people who challenge me and make me better and support me. But also, you know, at a certain age, and I've reached it, <laughs> um, you know, it's our responsibility to be reaching back and investing in the younger generations, right? And so to be much more deliberate about that. And so I think, you know, th there's a, yeah, that it, it, go, it should be going both ways. Right. Um, yes. So we're looking for our mentors as we are mentoring. And I think being able to really see how that ties to our well-being as you as you advance in your in your time right, in your career, right. as I'm closer to your age than Jimmy's age, but you, right. you definitely like you just feels good, right? Yeah. And you start to yeah. realize that the experiences that you have have value, and then you get to sort of touch back on those moments that you don't necessarily want to go through again. Yeah but you're able to sort of live it with your mentee and hear about the experience that they're having and 
you yeah. know, tell them it's like all going to be okay. Just like you said. Yeah. We're recording on a Friday afternoon and every Friday afternoon, I try to connect with at least one alum of our program. And that fills my cup as I go into the weekend, right? It's something I love to do. And, and, you know, so it, it, it does, it, 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 it does give us, give to us, right? As we're giving. That's amazing, Kari. I didn't know that you connected with one alum each week. That's, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I'm sure you did, but I just meant more like that it was intentional, like, and it yeah. was for you. It was yeah. almost. Yeah. It's, it's your Friday happy hour. Yeah. Yeah. I usually do it earlier in the day, but yeah. <laughs> Often around lunchtime. You, you can know? do it anytime you want on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mentoring can occur whenever. Yeah. It's great. Uh, I look forward to it. That's really cool. Well, Kari, thank you. We're going to have this be like a more of like a mini sode, I think. But what you just said I, was really beautiful. I wasn't expecting this, but what I heard from you, which Julie and I will chop up later, was that if you are if you consider yourself a lifelong learner, then the best way to do that is to reach back and help the next generation. Yeah. And why not do that through mentoring? Yeah. And it's going to help you like contextualize your own experiences and continue to make you a lifelong learner. That's right. Yeah. Teaching helps us further develop those skills, right? That you are helping others with. So, yeah. And Kari, I have one last question for you just related to that. If you are, if somebody is listening and they're like, you know what? I do really want to mentor, but I just don't know, like, how do I start? Do I just like post on LinkedIn? I'm a mentor, call me. Or like, what are some resources for somebody who is maybe at this point in their career and they do want to mentor, but they don't even know like where to start getting involved? Sure. Well, I mean, there's all types of mentoring, right? So there's formal programs and then there's informal mentoring. And I think, you know, we should be pursuing both. Mm -hmm. Um, So the informal piece is easy, right? There's people who come into your life and you can add value, you know, in some way, you know, be deliberate in doing that and and offer to them that, hey, you know, you need anything, I'm here and, and show them sort of what that might look like so that they feel comfortable in reaching out to you and having you be a resource. Formally, mentoring.org is a great resource and you can go in there and, you know, learn about the types of opportunities that are available in your area. Volunteer match is another. And, you know, you can start to, you know, I would say do a little bit of research, think about how you want to give, you know, what is the frequency? When are you available? What is the age group? What are the, you know, make some calls. A lot of the mentors who come to us, you know, they got there because they were looking for something and couldn't quite find it in other places Mm -hmm. and wound up with us because our program model fit best for them at this particular time in their life. So there are lots of different options, you know, working with younger people, older people, in person, virtually, you know, there's so many different ways in which you can do it. And, you know, the important thing is that you do something and give back. That is perfect. That's a great place to start. Thank you, Kari. Julie. I said it as we got into the the episode, how lucky are we? But seriously, how lucky are we that we get to listen to people like Kari Brown share basically a lifetime of knowledge and experience and an energy, like solid, powerful, important energy of trying to help others that we get that shared with us and we get to try to reflect it with more intensity back out in the world through Augmenters. You know, I think Kari is so clear on his mission and the kind of work that he has been doing, you know, all this time. But I think he's so humble about the impact that he's made and also really willing to start thinking about creative solutions for the future. Like he said, there's not enough mentors. There's challenges that are even greater than there were five years ago, which I know is a lot of what we see. And that we really need a a cumulative energy to be able to really make these changes. And I think he had like a great call to action around the importance of actually doing this work. Here, here. And Kari told us again, what he told us 80 episodes earlier and what we've heard so many times over and over again, that the hard part is the recruitment of mentors. That is the challenge. And then Kari gave us the best pitch for why you should become a mentor and how in a way easy it is, is that Kari said that current Kari, what he is today, who he is today, he wouldn't give any advice 
to pass Kari 20 years ago, who was founding Spark the Journey. He would just show up and listen. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's such a great way to, that's just a reminder of what you need to do is just listen, just show up, put one foot in front of the other, just start. And I am very excited to see what Kari's next 10 years look like and what kind of advice he will give themselves today. So Kari, <laughs> stay tuned. You might be episode 150, 200. Keep oh yeah, rolling. we'll just keep Kari on 100 every time. And at, if our we centurion. get to feel, our centurion guest, Kari Brown. I don't know if that's quite regal enough. We'll, we'll workshop it. The other thing that like I haven't been able to get out of my head is Kari's comment about if you're a lifelong learner, then you're a mentor. And so many people consider themselves lifelong learners. If you have a cell phone, you have access to more knowledge than anybody did in 1990 about it's if you're a lifelong learner, you want to hear the first person narrative of somebody in it right now, somebody younger than you, somebody trying to do something different than what you are doing just because it's a different time and in this world and truly listening to somebody else's experience is the best way to learn. Not reading about it, but listening to it and feeling what they feel as they go through their experiences. So if you're a lifelong learner, you are a mentor. And I think the majority of people in this world would describe themselves as lifelong learners. Therefore, the majority of people in this world need to be mentors. So Augmenters is here to support you. Get out there and start helping others and creating community one relationship at a time through mentoring. Amen. Augmenters on to the next 100. Augmenters on to episode 200. <laughs> Kari, give us another year or two. See you soon. We'll see you there. Augmenters out. Augmenters out. Wow, you've made it this far and we thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed our episode and discovered new ways to bring more authentic connection into your mentoring relationships. Want to tell them more, Jimmy? Be an Augmenter with us. Visit our website for the best interactive mentoring content at augmenters.us. Share our podcast with someone you care about. Like and subscribe. And yes, really, you following our show and writing a review, it's a big deal. Your actions provide us with the resources to continue our undefeated, unencumbered, prize-winning productions. We welcome questions and suggestions via email, hi at augmenters.us, or on social with our handle at augmentershq. We are most active and available on LinkedIn and YouTube. Shout out an earnest thank you to our intrepid producer, Erlen Cato. We appreciate you. Augmenters out. See ya.